What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Embark Live. Now, what we gotta be doing right now is some printmaking. We be doing some graphic design stuff. What we finna do right now is I gotta get some names painted on some denim jackets. Let me get them right quick. These right here, we gotta we got put some names on these. These are gonna be some kids' birthday presents. They some personalized jackets. I'm also gonna do some for my baby children. I gotta be printing on three of these jackets right here. They made by, uh, I don't even care, but you could do this on any type of fabric that you want. Also though, I really wanna thank y'all for 100 some subscribers. We actually just recently hit above 100 subscribers, so that's hella legitimate. I'm just trying to stay real. I really just be doing things. I'm not exactly sure what y'all really subscribing for. I just hope that y'all be sticking around. This is where I be dwelling. I'ma just keep telling these stories. This is just like pictures of life by a dude who draws pictures for a living. Gonna do some stencil work. What we gonna do is gonna we gonna get them cut out of the Cricut machine. Hold up. We got I already got it running. What we gonna need for this project is the jackets, which we call the substrate. This is called tempera paint. It's water based, but it work on fabric. You just gotta let it dry, and then we we gonna do the ironing. We be working with the paintbrush, and when we work with paint the paintbrush, we need a cup of water. We're gonna use a, we're gonna get a water vessel. And then we got the stencils, we're gonna cut out of the vinyl. What we had to do earlier was prep the, um, prep the parameters. So we had to measure it all out with a ruler. Yeah. Think about tolerances and margins and spaces. This is just graphic design stuff, just regular graphic design stuff. We also gonna need a uh, heat gun. Well, we don't need it, but we gonna use it because it's gonna make the process a little bit easier and more predictable. And faster, it's gonna make things faster. Once we got the print laid onto the substrate, we gonna lift up the lift up the stencil and then we gotta wait till it dries to the touch and then we gonna hit it with an iron. That's what we gotta do, a couple few minutes. After it's done drying and after we hit it with an iron, then you can put it in a washing machine and it should survive. We're just using tempera paint for this one because I have tempera paint for this one. You could also use any type of fabric appropriate ink or paint. That's just how it goes. Oh. Each part of the process for this project gonna have their own little problems to solve. In reality, it seems pretty straightforward. The final product, not very hard to imagine. I think I should be able to do all the math in my head. There's only one way to find out. We'll see what happens. All right, so I had to get the cutter running. I had to clean the blade. I got one already banged out. Now we're gonna do a couple other ones. I done use vector fonts, wrote out these names, and then I gotta upload them into the Cricut machine. Then I gotta pick them, then I gotta peel them, and I gotta prep them. With the, uh, with the backing tape. And I gotta apply them on the garments. Then we're gonna hit it with the white tempera paint. That's what it's called. All right, so when you get the vinyl cut out, sometimes what it helps actually, give it a little bend right here. And this is gonna loosen up all the areas that might still have some adhesive that's holding it together. And when you start getting to picking and peeling, things start coming up easily. In preparation to start peeling up all the letters, there's might be corners and then the counters of the individual letters. So the little inside spaces of like the capital A, capital D, you know, they got the counters on the inside. You can start picking up around them so they start lifting. So you pre-lift it and then when you get the straightaways, you're able to lift them all up and they come out smooth. Yeah, we did all three. Doubled up on it just in case we do a mess up or something, you know, boo-boo. But hopefully we don't run into that. What we gotta do right now is we gotta finish peeling all the rest of the perimeter off. Then we gotta prep these with some backing tape and then we gonna apply them. Hit it with the paint. We go get it.
What's up? Alright, this is how I be getting these prepped up. I made very tight tolerances on these margins right here. What we gonna do is pick out the perimeter so we got pretty much just one big block of stencil to work with. Try to maximize the size of the letters inside the space that I'm giving. That's what we got. Got it all measured out. Alright, we got the stencils done. We still gotta prep them, but I also got the um, printing station set up too. Now we gotta get the backing tape on these, then we can slap them onto the garments. Yay, yay. Alright, now that we got these out, We're gonna use a printing surface that's gonna elevate the printing surface so we only really working with what's gonna, what's gonna fit right here. Jacket on top of this, this on top of the jacket, paint all up in there and then we lift it up. Now we just gotta get the right jackets for the right name and the right size and everything corresponding correctly. We're gonna use a flat dry brush for this. For this process, you could also be doing screen print, which would be hella dope because you get a different, even consistent surface print. But what we're going to do is use the brush. We're going to give it that rough handmade feel. I will be doing some screen printing stuff in the future because that's one of my favorite printing methods. The show. Let's do it. We gotta undo all the buttons to make sure that there's no, um, to make sure, we gotta make sure we gotta undo the buttons so we can, so the jacket can open up and then lay flat. What's wrong with these buttons? There we go. We're gonna start with this one. We're gonna start with this one. You gotta watch out for those counters because you don't want to lift those up with the transfer tape. We just finished painting down this first one. What I want to do right now is I'm gonna lift it just to make sure there's nothing that went underneath it because if it goes underneath it, then we're going to have to problem solve again. So we're going to lift it up and see what happens. Oh, that's how it's sick. You just did that, bruh. That's on there. You can see all the little details that went up in there. Legit. Now we got to find a place for this to dry, paint the other ones down, and then we're going to hit it with a heat gun when they feel really dry, then we go hit it with iron. I be hitting up with two fast coats instead of two slow coats. First letter through the last letter and after the last letter, Go back to the first letter to the last letter. That's a uh, too fast coach. The dry brush technique that we be using is short little jabs, little short little jabs to get it all up in the letter form. And then we use broad strokes to even out the surface texture. What we're looking for is a smooth looking print when we lift off the stencil. To look like they have a consistent surface. That's just what we be doing.
For sure, that concludes all the printing. We're going we're gonna to lift it up. We're going to see what it's like. The other two are already drying right now. We're going to hit all three of them with a heat gun, expedite the process, and then we're going to hit them with the iron. That's what we got to do. Whoa, bro. That one came out all like, all like that, bro, all at once. Now, I can tell this one's a little bit of bleeding all up on the edges, but it's still got that rustic feeling. And I think once it's all done and dried and it looks like it's set in the material, it's gonna look very, um, it's gonna look very intentional. We always just gotta see what happens. We gotta lift these counters up. This paint be drying like hella fast. So the other ones might already be kind of dry to the touch, but we really gonna hit it with a heat gun to make sure. This used to belong to my mommy right here. My mommy gave this to me. I've been using this for like almost 20 years. I've been using this for over 20 years. First time I really got a handle on a heat gun was to uh, remove grip tape on a skateboard. We gonna use it to dry up the paint right now. Yeet yeet. You got a name on there. It is very dry to the touch. This is what had a little bit of bleeding all around the edges, but it still came out legible. Wasn't exactly sure what to expect. As long as it's legible when the product is in hand, I feel like that's successful. I'll be using this to iron on top of it. We're gonna put a t-shirt on top of these and then hit that up. We're gonna stack it up. This will be the iron. You can use any type of household iron. It's gonna be perfectly fine. I'm not exactly sure if there's any other type of iron anyways. I'll bring a light over. We go hit it with some low heat first. Then we'll we'll see what it's like we'll see what it's like when we put it up on a little medium boot. It don't need to really be all that hot. I don't think. Ugh. The show. Alright y'all, we just wrapped these up. Finally hit it with the iron. I'm really handling them. They super dry. They were really stiff at first. They were really hot at first. But now they cooled off. I think it came out pretty good. I mean, in, in reality, if I hit it with a number three or a number four coat, it'd probably be st standing out, probably standing out more prominently, but it's still legible. It looks good in hand, it feels good in hand. I think it's a good one. All right, for sure, everybody. It's getting late, and there's still cars. All right, y'all, I'm gonna catch y'all next time. If y'all like this video, maybe you like the video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe you consider subscribing. All right, for sure, y'all, I gotta head out. So I'm gonna see y'all next time, uh, and bark live. I'll be looking at the camera though.